just to mark the start of the class. Okay, this is quite an important class for me because this class is all about your core and a little bit of hip work. And the reason why we're doing core and a little bit of hip work is centering here, being aware of your abs is very, very important because when you know, when you focus on that center, you are aware of your personal power inside of you and you can reclaim that. It's very good for emotional resilience, okay? Um, during this COVID crisis, because we're told the outside is not safe, we feel a little disempowered, a little bit uncertain and a little bit fearful. Uh, so this class is all about dealing with difficult emotions and we're going to finish with the difficult emotions mindfulness exercise. You can stay with that at the end because it's a little bit long or you can just finish uh, when we've done um, a little bit of breathing at the end when you're laid on your back after we've done the full practice. Yoga is only one eighth of the whole practice of yoga. There's eight parts to it. So why is it such a difficult time be it, uh, at the moment? Um, it's called disenfranchised grief. What a big word. But what disenfranchised grief means that we've lost that ability to connect with other people as much as we'd like to. We've lost traditional rites of passage. For example, moving from one year to the next in September when we're going up in school, um, the end of year sort of celebrations and getting our certificates and, and so forth. Um, and, you know, moving not just from one year to another, maybe you may have finished and are going on to sixth form or going on to university, but you've still not had that end of year rite of passage to have that transition, but also feeling safe, feeling um, that your identity is intact, um, and also your hopes and your dreams. That's important. Being confident, knowing what your results might be but also your routine and also your sense of freedom. So this kind of disenfranchised grief, we're gonna try and reclaim that through our core for emotional resilience. That's really, really important, okay. So let's do some techniques, first of all, to help us deal with difficult emotions, okay. So what are we, what are we doing in yoga that's so important? First of all, I like to quote this, it's called feel to heal. So in this practice, I want you to really, really be open to the sensations and notice what is going on in your body. Feel the contact between your body and the floor. Feel the strength and power in your legs and your core. It will make you feel really empowered and strong. Just be open to sensation, that's really important. Um, to feel to heal, it's we call this somatic experiencing. So somatic has to mean of the body, soma mean the Greek word, um, of the body, but also resourcing, naming to tame. So when we do our mindfulness practice at the end, we're gonna name and tame what's bothering us. The most exciting thing about naming to tame things, with difficult emotions especially, is it dials down the fear part of your brain called the amygdala. Okay, so that's really important. So we're going to first of all do a little bit of grounding and centering and orientating, which is a really good resource that we can do to help us feel safe. Okay, you know, the outside world's out there, but we're going to be safe and strong and empowered in here. Um, and then we're going to check in a little bit with our body. We're going to have a set an intention with this practice. What do we want from this? What do we want from our sense of you know, our own well-being, what's the roadblock? And then we're going to move into quite a strong practice, working on the core a little bit. Okay, so, you know, you're going to fight the power with this one. So I hope you do enjoy it. Okay then, so come to a seated cr position, cross-legged. Okay, and let's get into this sort of uh, resourcing to help you feel calm with your emotions. So I just want you to notice what you see in your room. Okay. I want you to look for colours or objects that really draw your your sort of attention. You might want to group them together. Just look with that kind of curious, sort of open-minded 
beginner's mind as if you've never been in this room before. You're tricking your fear response that you have been safe by doing this. Can you take in the whole visual field of the room? And as you're doing that and looking around, can you notice your body? What's happening, sensations with your body as you take in the whole field of awareness? As you sense and aware of your seeing capability. So just checking in with the body at the same time. Now pay attention to your hearing. Just notice how you catch the sound of my voice. Notice any sounds that are inside of your room. I can hear a clock ticking. Can you notice any sounds outside of your room? Maybe other people in the house or birds or cars or anything. Just check in and notice as well with your body at the same time as that you're aware of your sense of hearing. Fantastic. And then notice any smells. If you're going to find it hard to amplify any smells, sometimes it's nice to have some essential oils burning while you're doing yoga or, or incense, but just bring your hands towards your nose and just see what you can smell. I can smell soap. See any, a, a nice hand cream that I put on. And just amplify that sensation of, hmm, lovely. And then let's amplify our sense of taste. Just move your tongue around your mouth and just feel the movement. Just wiggle it around a little bit. Mm. And just feel that movement. And then rub your hands together. This is a really good grounding exercise. It's really good for anxiety, all of these things that we're doing here. Just feel the sensations of your palms. And then really squeeze them together. Feel that squeeze and then as you let go, feel that tension release and then just gently hug and squeeze gently outside of your arms. Just, this is nice as well. This releases what we're missing so much, this idea of connecting with other people. Oxytocin, you know, the feel-good hormones. Self-hugging is so good for you. So good. Lovely. And then just bring the spotlight attention into your awareness of your breath. So we're going to start connecting with our core through our breath. So just notice the quality of your breathing right here, right now. Is it quite short and shallow up here? Does it feel quite tight in the chest? Can you slow it down and bring it down to the abdomen? Place your hands on your belly button if that feels comfortable when you're ready. Try this depending on how you feel. See if you can use your hands as feedback. Imagine you've got a balloon behind your belly button and you can feel the inhale and the exhale. And just try to use, if you can, this deep belly breathing as the background to your practice. Learning how to breathe properly and deeply into your belly really helps to slow down your overly active mind. It really helps with anxiety. It's very calming. And just keep noticing, notice the gentle soft rocking of the body, just like a wave or an ocean. Just notice the movement of the body with the hands. Use everything, somatic experiencing. When you feel everything, feel movement, feel sensation, hot, cold, tension, relaxation. When you tap into these sensations, it really helps. Listen to the body. Listen to your body, it's so important. It can really help to dial down your stress response. And then see if you can think of a wish. Make a wish for your own well-being. A little bit of an intention for this practice or just how you want to feel. If you're feeling really down and you know, you're know you connecting with your emotions and you're feeling quite negative, just flip that script. See if you can say something positive, like I am. So if you're feeling nervous or anxious, you can say I am calm. Just say that inside of your mind. Just a little bit of a wish for yourself. That's lovely. So let's come down onto the floor. We're going to start moving and grooving, everybody. So active child's pose. So you can have your knees together, okay, or your knees wide, okay, and slowly on the exhale, bring your hips back towards your heels. And we're going to really work into our shoulders because our shoulders really. Uh, you know, built for flexibility, but you know, when we've got a lot of tension in our shoulders, we need to stabilise and make it a little bit stronger, don't we? So let's make some Spider-Man fingers. Tend to our fingers, Spider-Man fingers, cupping, as if they're cupping, making a little bit of a turn. And just 
Try to drive your shoulder blades down your back, okay? Um, really nice and active in the shoulders and in the arms and just feel, just feel that sensation of your shins against the floor. Come into that awareness of your shoulders, your arms and your shoulder blades and just notice your fingers touching the floor, that little bit of pressure. And just really, really notice. Lovely. And then what we're going to do then is we're just going to come into puppy pose. So we're going to bring our knees together about hip distance apart. Make sure that our hips are right above our knees. And we're going to melt, but also come into our little tented Spider-Man fingers as well. So as we melt, we leave with our heart centre. We melt and we come into a back bend with our knee with our hips over our knees. And make your little Spider-Man fingers again. Okay, and really see if you can pull your core towards your spine. So let's keep a nice active core. Keeping an active core so you feel empowered and strong and got this sense of agency is you gently tilt your lower abs up towards your head throughout this practice. So you feel really, really active in this shoulder, in the shoulders here. Lovely. And then we're going to really activate our core now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to measure, okay, Measure our forearms so we can have our elbows, forearm distance apart, okay? And then you can interlace your fingers like so. We're going to come into forearm plank, so we're really going to activate this power centre in, inside of us. So take one leg back, okay? And then the other without, and so pull, really pull your core up towards your spine. Really lift your abs up towards your head. And really press your heels back so you're balancing on your toes and have your shoulders over your elbows and try not to try to push the ground away so that you're not sagging in your shoulders and you're not sagging your belly down or you're sticking your hips up imagine yourself like a, a straight rod okay and you can relax your neck a little bit in your head and just hold for five four three whoo two and one and then release oh so that's our core that's our power center lovely so we're going to come into cat cow nice big wide jazz hands i really want to see those fingers okay so we have knees underneath our hips and our wrists underneath our shoulders and we're just going to bend our elbows out as we circle our rib cage inhale up and exhale down so really circle your rib cage and really work into feeling the sensations in your core so i want you to really try and focus on your core today see if you can keep the spotlight of attention and then reverse keep the spotlight of attention in your core center that solar plexus the center of your being and if we can get that to work nicely everything else will work from that center Think of it as a, you know, a symbolic powerhouse of who you are, okay, and how strong you are and how you can claim back your sense of, you know, certainty and power. Lovely. So what we're going to do now is that this is a really interesting core work here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down onto my forearm with my left arm, like so, and I'm going to really press into my right hand and then I'm going to rotate okay rotate myself rotate my hips so they're stacked on top of each other so i'm trying to stack my hip bones on top of each other in a modified so really pull your core in with this top knee bent keep your foot flexed that's really important okay so we're really trying to push yourself so I'm, my my chest is going to the side and then see if you can pull your knee in towards your elbow on the exhale and then inhale bring it back keeping it that leg bent so see if we can do that again exhale strong core really push the ground away from you so you've got that nice stability in the body really really strong core Oof. work in that core center really tap into that power Ooh. oh it feels a bit cranky in the old hips that's okay and then let's come back towards tabletop 
and just release everything, just shake it all out. Take your head up and belly down on the inhale, little bit of cow, and exhale round your spine. Okay, oh, on the exhale. So let's do that the opposite side. So I'm going to turn around so you can see what I'm doing. So it's my right arm this time. Okay, this arm is straight. Okay, and then I'm going to rotate so that my hips are stacked as much as you can on top of each other. My chest is rotated to the side. Keep my knee bent. You know, press up from your heel, flex your toes, exhale. See if you can bring your knee to elbow. Whew. Keep going, exhale, in, inhale, out. Strong core, pull that belly button towards your spine. Feel your sense of power in the body. Fantastic, well done. Once we've finished our last one, which is our fifth one, we can come into child's pose and just connect back with our bodies and our sense of self and our breath and mental physical states. So push yourself back, hips back towards heels, knees wide, or knees to touch. And I just want you to check in. Place your forehead on the floor. This is a nice calming pose when you feel anxious. Just check in with your breath. See if you can bring it back to a nice smooth, steady inhale and exhale through the nose. Check in with your heart rate, your emotions, any physical sensations. And Really focus on the shins on the floor. So it's really important that you try to focus on as much physical states as you can. Comfort, discomfort, tension, relaxation. Noticing your body is so important. It allows us to develop a really strong vocabulary for how we feel, but also to help us when we listen to our body, we can look after ourselves. Really important self-care. Brilliant. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of core work. A little bit like I call this one dead bug. Okay, so come onto your backs. A little bit of a dead bug work here. Don't worry if you don't have any blocks, you don't have to have any. So as we come onto our backs, okay, head down, and we're, uh, we're trying to get our lower back into the floor. Nice strong core, belly button towards the spine. Okay, so we bend our knees at 90 degrees. Basically, all we're doing, okay, so. When I, when this leg's straighten, okay, we're gonna do opposite arm and leg. So this right arm's down and this left arm's behind my head. This one's straight and this one's at 90 degrees. Strong core, let's see if we can do our dead bug dance. Okay, remember this an opposite, keep going, dead bug. If you wanna make it harder, you can lift your head and your shoulder blades off the floor with your chin looking up towards the ceiling. So you try to move nice and slowly as if you're going through water with your dead bug dance, working on that core nice and strong. If you feel strain in your neck, just drop your head. Keep that belly button and that core pulling towards your spine, lower back in towards the mat. Oh, dead bug. Working that core and then exhale, bring your knees in towards your chest. Check in again with your mind, your emotions and sensations. Just feel that nice gentle rocking, feel your back against the floor. This is a nice posture, this, pulling your knees in towards your chest. It's nice and calm too. And also release tension in the lower back after you've done that. Lovely. Okay, let's see if we can rock up, massage our back. So we'll go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Backwards and forwards, Woo! and see if we can come up. Right, hey, to a bent sort of. So we're going to stick our butt out, feet parallel like train tracks. Take our arms out, okay, like aeroplane wings. Really stick your butt out. Nice, lovely. Place your thumbs in your hip crease, and we're going to come into a nice forward fold. Folds and inversions are really good for you know calming your body. And pull and tip. Using your thumb to tip your hip crease up and back. Place your belly on your thighs, on your quads, and let your head dangle. Now, if you want to work into the shoulders, now, when you're stressed and you're tense, it gets into your shoulders and your neck. So if you want to, take your arms out to the side with your thumbs pointing down, interlace your fingers behind your back, or grab opposite um, forearm, and come into a mudra, so on the inhale, lift your hands 
high up towards the ceiling. You drop your head, squeeze your shoulder blades, blades together and feel that stretch across the shoulders. Mm, and just nod your head, yes. No. Yes. Get all that tension out. You know, the body holds all your emotional tension. Nice. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come into a little bit of our flow. So take your left leg back and come into a low lunge. Drop that knee. Okay. Knee over ankle. Okay. Lovely. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into some nice twists working our core. So remember, focus on that core. Nice and strong, pulling in towards the spine. Okay, so here we go. Place your left hand inside of that right foot. Okay, and then you place your hand on your right knee and then exhale, twist your chest towards your knee. Okay, really focus on the strength and power in your lovely. Okay, and then what we're going to do is take your arm back, take your right arm back, power into these legs, Really important that you power into your legs, strong, stable, grounded legs. This helps you to feel in control and really grounded and safe. This helps you to feel safe when you feel a sense of fear. So really feel the power in your legs. Okay, so on the inhale, scoop your hand forward on the inhale and then on the exhale, take your hand back. You can look at your fingers, inhale, scoop your hand forward and exhale, take it back. Really feel the power in your legs. Inhale forward, scoop it back, lovely. Then we're going to come into our high lunge. Place your hand on that front knee. See if you can come up nice and powered. Make sure your hips are square to the front of the mat. Just gently bend that back knee so that your tailbone goes towards the floor to pull that core in. Remember your power centre, okay? And then we're going to come into a warrior position. So we take our arms up first, lift and lengthen shoulders over hips, and then we drop that back foot. So that heel is in line with the arch of that back foot. So this foot, foot that foot's pointing to the short side, this is pointing to the long side. So, how do we get a good strong, okay, I'll do this the opposite way around. How do we get a good strong warrior position to help us feel safe and secure when we're in a fear state? What we do is we work into the strength of the legs. Active back leg, nice and strong, squeeze that muscle, hook a muscle to the bone, sink that front knee over the ankle. Now let your knee go towards your pinky, your chest is towards the long side of the mat. Nice and powerful, chest lifted, tilt again your core centre, tilt your lower abs up towards your head to lengthen your lower back. Lovely, so we're in our warrior two. Now we're going to come into warrior two eagle arms to help stretch out that tension in the shoulders when we're feeling stressed. So take your right arm, uh, your right elbow directly under your left elbow, okay, straighten this top hand, so you've got your ding -ling -ling, thumb to your, towards your nose, backs of the hands together. So you, t so my right hand, my palms are facing each other like so, or come into a hug like this with fingers around the shoulder blades. So in your eagle arms, whether eagle or hug, hugs are nice, helps you to release the feel good hormones. Nice big inhale, lift your elbows up, keep power and strength in those legs. Keep tilting that core up towards your head, empowered and strong. Active back leg, really press down into that back foot. Really press down to that front foot. Lovely, don't forget to breathe in through the nose, out through the nose. Then we're going to take our arms wide, thumbs pointing down towards the floor. Interlace your finger behind your back and we're going to come into a humble warrior. Take a nice big inhale, lift your chest up towards the ceiling. And exhale, fold, so that your right shoulder comes inside your right knee. We're going to work our core strength here. Keep pressing and keep strong. Keep that front knee bent. Strong legs, power core. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Really open up into the shoulders. You can always grab your forearms if that feels like more comfortable. Okay, inhale. Really pull into that core. Use your core strength to lift all the way back up. Lovely. 
Perfect. Then straighten that front leg. We're going to come into a wide-legged position. So bring your toes, pigeon toed, heels slightly apart in this nice wide leg fold. We're going to come into a nice wide leg fold, but the trick is to really work on active hugging these thigh muscles to bone. Nice and strong again, feeling power, you know, feeling empowered, working on our sense of fear. Nice big lift and lengthen and fold with the flat back. Lead with your chest from your hip crease. You can place your fingers on there and then we can do this little bit of a stretch. So we're going to really stretch into the shoulders again. We're doing a lot of this, aren't we? It's very good for the emotions, isn't it? I feel the weight of the world on your shoulders. So we're just going to stretch all the way over to my left and reach, 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 reach. See if you can reach with your fingertips without keep your hips over your heels. Really squeeze your quads, your thighs to release your hamstrings. Okay, and then see if you can come all the way over to the right side and feel that stretch. Really work into that side. See if you can feel that stretch in the left side of your body. Lovely. And then bring it all the way up to the centre. Place your hands on your hips and with a flat back, pull your core in. Use your core to lift you all the way up. Lovely. Perfect. So let's come to the front of our mats to equal standing posture and check in with how we feel. So just come to standing position. Close your eyes, one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. And just bring your attention inside of your body. See if you can come back to noticing your breath. See if you can stabilise it and make it slow it down. Nice deep inhales, nice deep exhales. Check in with your body, notice how you feel. Not looking for reasons why, we're not judging or analysing. Nice, curious, mindful attention there. And just notice what's going on right here, right now. Any physical states or mental states, emotional states. Again, check with your core, check with your heart centre, lovely. So once again, we're going to come into this fold that we are, so we can do that exercise on the opposite um, side. Place your hands on your hip crease. Bend your knees so your hips go as far back as they can so you can place your belly on your thighs. Lovely. Feet hip distance apart. Parallel leg train tracks. Take your arms out wide with your thumbs towards the floor. Interlace your fingers or grab opposite forearm. Nice big inhale as you take. Lift and lengthen your arms, squeezing shoulder blades together. Open up the chest. Tipping your head towards the ceiling and your, sorry, your head towards the floor and your tailbone towards the ceiling. Nice deep stretch. Okay, we're going to come down. Right leg back this time, low lunge, lovely. So, knee over ankle, lovely. Use that hand to assist you in any way. Place your right hand inside your left foot. Okay, we're going to really power up that back leg, remember, working on the idea of fear is to feel grounded and safe and secure. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to Take our hand on our left knee and on the exhale, twisting from above the belly button, twist towards the wall behind you or towards that bent knee. Take your left hand back, okay? So on the inhale, scoop it forward and on the exhale, take it back. Let's do that a few more times. Inhale, scoop it forward, keep pressing into the floor. Don't collapse, strong core, strong legs. Feel power, feel strong. Working with the breath, inhale and exhale and inhale. Okay, so use your hands if you need to. So we'll keep powering up into that back leg, coming into that high lunge. So use your hand to push yourself up into a high lunge, that knee over the ankle. Slightly bend that right leg, pull your core in. Nice, strong, hip square to the front. Lovely. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop that, take your arms up, chest lifted. Spine long, and then we're going to drop. So I'm going to drop my right foot so it's parallel with the short side of the mat. My left foot's parallel with the long side of the mat. Heel to arch alignment. So remember what we're doing here with this active position, strong and empowered. Pressing down, active back leg. Pull, hook muscle to bone. Sink that front knee in. Chest to the side. Tilt your abs, your lower abs up towards your head. Roll your shoulder blades down your back. Nice and relaxed here, so we're not carrying any tension. 
Lovely. So we're going to do our version of eagle arms on the opposite side. So right arm under left. Okay, so elbow on top. Okay, like that. Backs of hands or hug. Inhale, lift your elbows up high. I'll go for the snog. Ooh, what did I call that? A snog. That reminds me of when I was at the playground. I think I was pretending I had a boyfriend once when I was quite small. Silly thing to do. Okay, lift your elbows up. Okay, I think I did that. Put my hands around me as if to say somebody was hugging me. Lift my elbows up nice and high. Lift and lengthen. Power into that legs. Keep strong. Make sure that left knee is going towards your pinky side. So it's not collapsing inwards. It does tend to do, let it roll in, let it roll out. Okay, lovely. Inhale, take your arms wide, thumbs pointing down. Interlace your fingers behind your back or grab opposite forearm. Inhale to lengthen, lead with your heart and your chest. Bring your left elbow, so left shoulder inside your left bent knee, coming into humble warrior. You don't have to come into humble warrior if you don't want to. Keep that back leg nice and strong, really press down as that front foot. Don't forget to breathe. Nice strong inhales, nice strong exhales. You use your core. Nice big inhale to lift and lengthen as you come all the way up. Ooh. Lovely. And then come to the front of the mat. Let's check in with our bodies again. Left hand on heart, right hand on belly. Close your eyes. Allow the body to soften. Just check in with your breath and your mental and physical states. Feel the feet on the floor. See if you can bring yourself back to catching your breath, slowing it down as we slow down this practice. Mm. Just notice what you feel like right here, right now. We're not, gonna, we're not trying to change or fix anything with yoga. You're perfect as you are. Fantastic. Okay then, so to get down onto the floor, we're going to come into Malasana or Buddha Squat. So take your, like, Charlie Chaplin feet, toes out, heels in, really, really near, nice and wide. You can come down as low as it feels comfortable, or you can get down on the floor wherever you feel like. Just try this depending on how you feel. There's always options. So as you come down very, very slowly, knees going in the directions of your toes, just be mindful if you can't get any lower and you're just happy to put your elbows down there and then get onto the floor however you want to. But with this Malasana, Buddha squat, we've got elbows inside of our knees. If that feels uncomfortable, prop yourself up with something. Stick it under the tailbone. Or if you just want to be like that, do what feels right for you. Lovely. And then when you feel ready, let's get down onto the floor. Yes. So we're coming now to the part where we're just going to cool down a little bit and then in a moment we're going to get ready for our guided relaxation. So we're going to come into happy baby. Okay. So let's do it a fun way. Just be careful when you do it. We'll come in from um, bear and then happy baby. So knees bent in front of you, up to your chest. Let's see if we can do a little bit of fun here. Get your two piece fingers and see if you can hook them around your toes. Okay, or you can place your hands around your feet, whichever feels fine for you. So, we we'll keep our chest lifted and try not to rock back. We we'll see if we can balance on our hip bones. Nice big inhale, strong core, nice and powerful. See if you can stretch your legs out. Ooh, see if you can stretch your legs out. Yes, without falling over. I like this pose, it's quite fun. I think it's called bear, something like that. See if you can not fall back. Okay, nice. And, so really squeeze your thigh muscles to release your hamstrings. It's called reciprocal inhibition. Posh word, isn't it? If you do GCSE or a level PE, you'll, it, it, might, it might crop up, I don't know. Okay, and then bend your knees and let's see. Okay, take your hands outside of your feet like this with your elbows inside your knees and your hands outside of your feet and see if we can roll back into happy baby with a little bit of fun, very, very slowly. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> there you go. I've rolled back into happy baby without killing myself. 
So in happy baby, your knees are going into your elbow, right into your armpits. This is quite a nice hip stretch. Crazy folks. Probably not tried that. <laughs> I'm just wondering whether or not I should have done that. Um, maybe that might not have been a good idea. <laughs> I think, you know, you have to really work on that core strength and control. Not sure I've got that just yet. <laughs> Working on it. So there you go and happy baby. And then oof, just bring your feet flat to the floor with your knees bent. And we'll come into a nice twist just to get some tension out of that lower back and reset the spine. Bend your knees. Oof, it's been quite a challenge today, hasn't it? It's been not too bad. Okay, and then on the exhale, drop your knees all the way over to the right, keeping your shoulder blades. Keeping your shoulder blades flat to the floor. Just a nice little bit of a stretch down that side of the body. Just relax into it and just focus on sensations. Just notice how you feel now after you've done all of that. Just reflect on how your body feels after today's practice. Just notice if just notice how you feel emotionally and physically. Notice changes, maybe subtle changes. I'm just sort of like, oh, I'm really tired. And inhale to centre and then exhale, drop your knees in the opposite direction. The always thing to remember with yoga is it's not a competition. With anybody else and you, you you're really trying to just go to your edge and not push yourself it's all about balance yoga is about balance my meditation teacher always tells me if it's a struggle then why are you doing it you just got to make it easy for you If everything's too much of a struggle, if it's too much hard work, and then squeeze your knees into your chest. I've got a little eye mask. You might want to make one. Let me know if you want to. Um, I can put the eye mask uh, pattern online. Let me know if you want to do the eye mask. Okay, so you can lie on your back. You can have a blanket if you feel a bit cold. I've got the heating on today because it's cold. With a nice eye mask. This has got lavender in it. Okay, and you can put it in the microwave or you can put it in the uh, freezer just you can heat it up or cool it down, whatever it depends what you feel like, if you've got a headache or anything. Just lie on your back and then let's get ready for a guided relaxation. Now, if you think the guided relaxation is too long for you, you want to finish now, just spend a couple of minutes connecting with your breath and the body on the floor, just a couple of minutes to relax. This is the best part of your practice. You're sealing in the benefits. Okay, but if you want to stay for the guided relaxation, which is all about dealing with difficult emotions, then please do. So you can stop the practice in a couple of minutes or you can stay with me for the next 10. It's up to you. So whatever feels comfortable for you, lie down on your back. You can use lots of pillars and blankets and anything to hand to help you feel really, really comfortable. And you stay here. Well, I guide you through this practice. I just want to hold the space and talk to the camera while you're laid on the floor. And this is a mindful self-compassion practice. It's a, a practice that helps you to build emotional resilience and help you to cope in difficult times. It gives you that inner strength to be able to thrive. So if you want to finish the practice now, you can do. Otherwise, if you want to stay, or you can just use this part of the practice, which is at exactly 40 minutes, separately on another day. So find yourself in a comfortable position. Close your eyes and take three relaxing breaths. And place your hand on your heart or any other soothing place to remind yourself that you are in the room and that you too are worthy of kindness and compassion.
without turning on the emotional tap too much. If you can, and if you're ready, and depending on how you feel, recall a mild to moderate difficult situation that you are in right now. Perhaps you are worried about your examination results, a relationship, somebody, a loved one that you haven't seen for a long time that you care about deeply. It might be your feeling of grief or anxiety because you've lost that um, sense of freedom or that special mind milestone that you get at the end of year which is the transition from moving up or to start a new college or a university. That important rite of passage. It might be that you want, you feel unsafe, you're worried about your hopes and your dreams for the future. Whatever it is that you're feeling right here, right now, choose, do not choose a very difficult problem or a very trivial one. Choose a problem that can generate a little bit of stress in your body when you think about it. And try to clearly visualise the situation, who's involved, what's happening, almost like a film. Using all of the five senses, place yourself in that position. And as you relive this situation, notice any emotions that arise within you. And if so, see if you can label that emotion that comes up. Because when we name it, we tame it. If you're having many emotions, see if you can name the strongest emotion associated with the situation. And repeat the name of the emotion to yourself. As if you were a friend who's being kind to you who's validating for you the difficulty of what you're going through right here, right now. Say it in a soft, soothing, caring voice to yourself. Ah, that's sadness. Ah, that's worry. Or, ah, that's grief. expand your awareness to your body as a whole. Recall the difficult situation and scan your body for where you feel the difficult situation most easily in your body. In your mind's eye, sweep your body from head to toe, stopping where you feel tension or discomfort. Just feel what is feelable right here, right now. And if you can, choose a single location where maybe this emotion is felt most strongly. It could be muscle tension, a hollow feeling, that feeling of heartache, that gut punch. Just notice. Just locate with this body scan. Take your time. Just notice with curiosity and non-judgment. Now cautiously and mindfully, gently move towards that spot. See if you can allow the awareness to inhabit the physical sensation of the emotion in your body. location where you feel that difficult emotion. See if you can soften into that location, that sensation, that spotlight. See if you can allow your muscles to relax on each exhale, a letting go, a collapsing of the body, a softening of the body. 
as if you are slipping into a warm, lovely bath. Soften, soften, soften. We're not trying to change this emotion. We're just trying to hold it in a tender and gentle way. Like holding and cuddling a child who's in distress, a baby or a pet with affection and love. If it's too hard, just soften a little around the edges. If you wish, place your hand over the part of the body that feels uncomfortable. Feel the gentle touch of your hand. Perhaps imagining warmth and kindness flowing through your hand to the spot. Maybe even thinking of your body as if it were the body of a beloved child or pet. Can you use some comforting words that might help? If so, imagine you can. Imagine what would a friend say? What would you say to a friend who was struggling in the same way? What would you say to your friend? See if you can say it in a soft voice, a soothing, calming, friendly, loving voice. I'm so sorry you feel this way. I care about you deeply. If it gets too hard, just feel free to open your eyes whenever you wish or to let go of the exercise, just to focus on your breath and your body against the floor. You don't have to push yourself through this. Just always try whatever you feel. Everything is optional. This is just an invitation. And then finally, allow the discomfort to just be there. Can you make room for it without resisting or saying no? Can you allow yourself to be just as you are, just like this, only for this moment? Can you just notice letting go without resisting, without fighting, just softening towards it, naming to tame it and feeling to heal? And then just let go of that awareness. Just notice everything coming in and out of your consciousness. Thoughts, emotions, sounds, physical sensations, almost as if you're watching clouds drift across the sky. And then come back to an awareness of physical sensations and sounds. Amplifying taste by moving your tongue around your mouth. Pulling and squeezing your arms if that feels like you want to do that. Slowly opening your eyes to take in where you are. To take in the whole visual field of awareness. To knowing where you are at this time of day. And the place you're in. Noticing colours, objects. So if you want to stretch it out, stretch it out, wiggle your toes, rub your hands together and feel the sensations of your palms, feel the heat, just gently cup the eyes and the face, just touch your face, just come back to where you are in physical sensations, squeeze your arms and your shoulders. Thank you very much for today's practice. Please share this video with your friends. Please like, please comment, tell me what you'd like to practice and, and do follow us on YouTube, Yoga Therapy Home. Namaste.